Matt Nur is doing some catching for Max Bain. We've seen him in the lineup more recently. And looking like a pretty good defensive alignment as well. Sean Lawler at first base. No Patrick Miner. He was injured in yesterday's game. Departed with back injury after being hit there. Max Bain is ready with the first pitch to Reese Armitage. And it's going to be in there for strike number one. And we are underway. Yeah, really interested to see how Bain reacts today after that flawless inning in the All-Star game. He threw, as we mentioned after the All-Star game, he threw a perfect inning, three strikeouts, and three batters faced. See if he can sort of carry that momentum into today and give the Salcats a great outing here. Flawless is a good way to put it, Matt, as he had those three strikeouts. And I remember you saying that earlier this morning about Max Bain and not someone we've really thought about as a guy who's going to crack under pressure, and we don't expect that here today, but a little bit of an interesting start that last time out with the All-Star game, not something that usually happens, then quick turnaround here back for this game. So it will be great to see Bain back in action for the Salt Cats. One pitcher of the night in that All-Star contest. Two and one here to Armitage. That pitch hits the inside corner for a strike. Two and two now the count. We were told that Bain was hitting the Low 90s in that All-Star game. Said his slider was upper 80s as well. 2-2. Two -two. Armitage reaches out, hits that foul down the third baseline. Bain coming in. He has a 2.57 ERA. The 2-2. Two -two. That pitch just a little high, and the count's going to go full. A league-leading 35 strikeouts for Max Bain. 38 if you're counting the All-Star game and if you're scoring at home. Payoff pitch to the first batter. Bain in his windup. The pitch is going to be fouled off back into the left, and we'll do it again. And as you mentioned, 35 strikeouts for Max Bain and only 20 walks on the season, so a great strikeout to walk ratio for the Saltcats ace. See if he's looking to pound the zone today and add to that strikeout total. Two wins, no losses for Bain. The 3 2. Again, fouled back. Reminiscent of that last at bat that he had in that All Star game where one of the opposing players was just having a really good time fouling off those pitches, and Bain was working to put that final put away pitch on, and he did end up battling back. Set now. Kicks on the 3-2 again. Just a little high, and he's going to lose Armitage for a walk. So now here comes Robert Armitage. No, you're not seeing double. It is, in fact, the twin of Reese. Both go to Marist College. Seen them a couple of times here. Of course, Robert, number 26, playing shortstop. Well, Reese now on first base playing center field tonight. Bain now from the stretch. Lawler holding on the runner at first base. The grounder is going to get through into left field for a base hit. Christian Akari turned to the side and let it go. He was pretty close in on the grass. and It was just too far to his glove side, and that got through between himself and Gorman. So with no outs, that's a hit. And now runners on first and second here quickly for Max Bain. Yeah, tough play for Nakari to make there, and he knew he wasn't going to get that off the bat, but it looked like Bain was trying to just bounce back after that long battle at the leadoff walk and just trying to pound the zone there and maybe left one over a little too much over the plate. Now he's got himself in an early jam. Now Andrew Roden at bat. Bain checking on second, now the pitch. Outside corner for strike one. Roden coming in at 299. Lots of Silversmith players are above or at that 300 mark. Roden in 87 at bats has 15 runs, 26 hits. Main set, still looking at second base, and now time called. Six batters are officially listed as hitting 300 or better on the NYCBL website for. The Cheryl Silversmiths. Oh, one to Roden is inside. Good stop by Matt Nurse. 
looked like a breaking pitch maybe that time from Bain that just hit the dirt. Yeah, well, he went to a curveball first pitch and was able to drop it in for a strike, and that time sort of started in the zone and broke to the to the ground and wasn't able to get a swing and miss. The Armitage brothers are on first and second. Sean Lawler is on the grass at first base. One and one is the count. Pitch from Bain is going to be outside and fouled off. One and two now to the left-hitting Andrew Roden. Roden also has 17 RBIs coming into tonight. Silversmiths looking to strike first here in this top of the first inning. Still no outs for Max Bain. The one-two. Way outside. Bain looking for confirmation on the count, two and two. Outfield playing at a moderate depth. Infield as well. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's in there for a strike, and Max Bain has his first strikeout. Got him on the outside corner. Looked like an off-speed pitch, and that's K number one for Max Bain. It looked like Bain went to that curveball. Start off the at-bat and was able to drop it in for a strikeout and went right back to it on the 2-2 count for to get the punch out. A little bit of a slow start, but that's the Max Bain we know. Here's Chris Turco. We saw him in the home run derby during the All-Star game. First pitch to him is inside, just a little bit too far. Turco, I believe, had one long ball. He was no match for Taylor Fajardo, who put out five in that first round. Of course, many saying that Turco benefits from a short porch in right field at Sherrill's Field. He has eight home runs on the season. That is good for a league lead. Turco hitting 311 on the season. 103 at bats, 32 hits. The 2 0 pitch. In the dirt, good stop by Nurse once again. Bain not going with his signature hoodie for warm-ups tonight. Bain usually wears that hoodie and headphones for every occasion. Maybe just a little bit too warm out there. 3-0 is the count to Turco with runners on first and second and one out. That pitch hits the top of the zone, and that's going to be a strike. Turco with a tall stance from the right side. Bain comes set on the 3-1. The pitch is low and inside, and Turco is going to walk. So that's going to make it bases loaded here early in the top of the first inning. Two walks broken up by a hit and a strikeout. A little bit of trouble here early for Max Bain. Salt Cats ace. Christian Nakari in on the grass at third base. Sean Lawler close to it at first. Concerned with that run coming home from third, now just 90 feet away. With one out, the pitch. That's going to be grounded up to Mike Gorman at shortstop. Could be two. On to Ferlenda for one. On to first. That's going to be two. Max Bain gets out of the inning off the ground ball and the double play. They turn two. Gorman, Ferlenda, and Sean Lawler. They... Bail them out, and we're going to head to the bottom of the first with a score still tied at zero. Bottom of the first now, and here's your starting lineup for the Salt Cats in order. Adam Holland, first at center field, followed by Xander Falenda, the second baseman, and Sean Lawler rounding out the top three at first base. Then Isaac Porter, the designated hitter, followed by Drew Patterson in right field, then Matt Nurse at catcher. And the final three, Christian Nakari at third base, Chris Anderson in left field, and Mike Gorman batting in the nine spot, the shortstop. First, we're going to see Adam Holland, speedy man from Rutgers. Holland now hitting 202 on the season with 17 hits. Team leading 12 stolen bases for Adam Holland.
First pitch he sees from DeRoche. He cuts on it and misses. 0-1 now the count. Holland backs out and resets. DeRoche set the pitch. Way outside. Count even at 1-1 one one now to Adam Holland. Shows bunt. Pops it back and foul. There was a lot of bunt attempts yesterday, Matt. And we were kind of surprised to see that. You think they'll go with the same thing today? Yeah, you know, we always talk about how Coach Martinez likes to play small ball. And he worked out for him yesterday. They were able to get nine hits going along with that small ball. But... See if they do that same approach to try to score some runs. I think Coach Martinez will stick with that approach. Well, the hits were coming last night, and the pitching was decent as well. They just couldn't get the run support. So that pitch is too far inside. Two and two now the count. It was an odd performance where couldn't exactly pinpoint what went wrong for the Sawcats other than they just couldn't plate those runs. Two and two. Too far outside. Full count now to Adam Holland. DeRoche takes a couple breaths. Now set the pitch. Too high. Adam Holland's going to take his base. We saw Adam Holland get on twice yesterday, and he scored both times he was on. So definitely a very valuable guy to have on base. This is the top of the Sulcats order. Here comes Xander for Lenda. Plenty of signs from Coach Martinez down at third base. For Lenda, coming in at 318, 28 hits. 11 RBIs as well as they check on Adam Holland at first. For Lenda's been one of the most consistent bats in this lineup. First pitch to him, high and inside, almost hit his shoulder there. DeRoche now from the stretch. Adam Holland, very short lead over at first. Held on by Roden. Swing and a miss from Ferlenda, but he got a piece of it. Looked initially like he just missed it, but the ball goes foul back and over to... Just beyond the on-deck circle. Interesting that we haven't seen Ferlinda square to bunt here. We saw Holland get on to lead off the game yesterday, and then Ferlinda bunted him over. Lawler was able to drive him in. Sawcats took an early one nothing lead, so looks like Coach Martinez is letting Ferlinda hit away here. 1-1, one one. now he shows bunt and pulls it back. Just as I said, that Ferlinda goes to square. Almost like you could predict the future there, man. <laughs> What are the advantages of bunting maybe your best hitter at this point? It seems like from maybe an outside perspective, you just want to let him hit away. Yeah, I think I'm definitely a believer in letting your guy hit away early on in the game, maybe later on if it's a tight game. Holland going. It's a strike. He pulls it back, and that ball is knocked down by Armitage before it goes into center field. Holland gets his base. It was a strike anyway, and Ferlenda pulled it back. Count now even, 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, I think it's important to let your guys hit early on in the game and try to produce as many runs as you can. And then if it's a tight one down the stretch, you just doesn't matter who's at the plate. You're just trying to get guys in scoring position for the guys behind them. Scoring position now for Adam Holland at second, not really being held on. Swing and a miss from Ferlenda, and he's going to head back to the bench. That's a strikeout. Looked like he tipped it, and it went back into the mitt, and Ferlinda's going to take a seat, and here comes Sean Lawler. Talked to Sean before the game. Great interview with Sean. You can check that out. That's on our Facebook page. Sean has really done a great job at the plate, and he's stepped up where he's needed to be. He classifies himself as an outfielder, but he's been playing that first base role to almost perfection. Salcat's offense really revolves around getting some big hits. And Sean Lawler, Taylor Fajardo, a couple of guys that do that. 
So he doesn't really always feel some extra pressure to do that, but he is aware of his role. That pitch barely inside. 1-0 and now the count. Yeah, and Lawler, absolutely a guy that the Sawcats lineup relies on to produce runs, and he knows that, and does a great job of stepping up night in and night out, doing a great job of getting on base and trying to drive in guys like Holland and Ferlanda that we see in front of him most of the time. 1-0, Holland on second, the pitch. Framed and held by Gazzo, but that misses again. It's 2-0. Some close pitches, and DeRoche needs to step off, take a second to reset. Maybe wanted a couple of those spots. A little bit of a closer zone than what we got last night. 2-0. Lawler fouls it back. Lawler now. Porter on deck. Still only one out here in this bottom of the first. No score. 2-1 the count to Sean Lawler. Roche set, checking back on Holland, the pitch. Lawler whiffs. Couldn't connect on that curveball, it looked like. Two and two, count even. Two and two. In the dirt. Good job of Lawler laying off it. He's got... I believe 26 walks now on the season. Yes, 26 for Sean. That's a team high. Next closest is 21 with Taylor Fajardo. Lawler very good with the plate discipline. 3-2 count. Just a bit too far inside, and Sean's going to take his base. That's another walk. Now Isaac Porter, a little bit curious to see him in the four spot. He's only hitting 167. Does have a homer. Now with Lawler at first, Holland on second. Swings and misses at the first pitch. Matt, what do you make of Porter in this spot of the four, four hole? Yeah, I think he's definitely got some power. We've seen that home run, and he's definitely... Even on his outs, he's gotten deep flyouts almost to the warning track most times, so he definitely has that power. And with Fajardo getting what it seems like that night off, and as we mentioned, a guy like Miner not in the lineup tonight, you're definitely looking for some power. So giving him the opportunity to hit in the four hole and gets opportunities like this with guy in scoring position, we'll see if he can produce. Quickly down 0-2 here. Only one out. Armitage from the stretch. Excuse me, DeRoche from the stretch, and that's high. Almost got confused there. I thought there were three Armitage brothers out there. <laughs> Only two still. Might be a third one in the bullpen. We'll have to see you later. DeRoche from the set. Checking back on Holland. Dancing around over at second base. That one's hit through in the gap in right center field for Isaac Porter. Adam Holland coming around third base. He's going to score easily. Sean Lawler being waved around as... That ball rolled all the way to the warning track. Isaac Porter thinking three. He's going to get there. That's a two RBI triple for Isaac Porter. And just in case you thought Isaac Porter was not suited for that four spot, there he goes. Pretty good for Isaac Porter. As two runs score, it's two to nothing for the Salt Cats. And here comes Drew Patterson. Yeah, just a great job there, staying through that ball and punching it in the gap. And as we know, when it hits that turf, really likes to get on a get on a run quick. And it got all the way to the wall. Looked like both center and right fielder were a little confused on who was going to actually pick up the ball and throw it in. Ended up getting all the way to the wall. And Porter with not the greatest speed on the team, but was still able to leg out a triple there. First pitch to Patterson is going to be in there for a strike. Pretty great work by Isaac Porter, as I mentioned his stats. Not hitting at a great clip on the season and absolutely smoked that one right in the gap where no one was. Some great hitting with only one out. Patterson fans at that outside pitch. And the Salt Cats get what they need to do with two runs on the board here in this bottom of the first. 
So nice run support for Max Bain. The 0-2 to Patterson. Fouls it straight back. That would have hit us if there was no screen. That pitch way behind Patterson. Had to duck for it. First ball of the count from DeRoche. Isaac Porter still 90 feet away at third base. The 1-2. Patterson reaches out, hits that to center field. Armitage going back. He's going to make the catch on the run, and that's going to be number two. But Isaac Porter tags up and scores. So make it 3 nothing in favor of the Salt Cats. Drew Patterson with the RBI on the sacrifice fly. And here we are, 3 to nothing for the Salt Cats. Going to use this offense last night, but they'll take it as they have not officially beaten Cheryl yet this season. 0 for 4 against Cheryl on the season with 3 left to play, including today. The other two games are indeed at Cheryl, so this is the last home game that the Salt Cats will play against the Silversmiths. Now Matt Nurse. Two and zero to him. Hits the 2-0 pitch, broke his bat, that's up the middle, going to be tough play. The throw on the run to first is going to get him in time. Armitage to Rodin to get Matt Nurs. And that's finally the end of the inning, but not before the Syracuse Salt Cats take a 3 to nothing lead off a 2-RBI triple from Isaac Porter and the sacrifice fly from Drew Patterson. We're heading to the second right after our break. <laughs> 